Praise God, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise God, everybody. You know, I thank the Lord for grandmothers. How many of you grew up with wonderful grandmothers? Let me see your hands. We're the amazing grandmothers. And if you were anything like me, you would hang out in the kitchen because you knew they were cooking. And you get a chance to taste some of the good food before everybody else got a chance to taste some of it. But they never cooked in that kitchen without singing. Now, some of them had good voices and some of them didn't. But they still sang to the glory of God. And one of the songs I remember them singing is, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. Yes. Oh, yes, I will. Till I die. Till I die. Y'all got to sing it better than that. I will trust. There you go. In the Lord. I will trust. In the Lord, I will trust. In the Lord, till I die. What's the next verse? I'll stay on the battlefield. I will stay on the battlefield. Come on, y'all. There you go. I will. I will stay on the path of Until what? Until I be. die. I will stay on the songs. I'll stay on the battlefield yeah. until I die. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What a friend we have in Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh, our sins and griefs to bear. Yes. What a privilege to carry oh, my Lord. everything Jesus. to God in prayer. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. Yes. Yes, All our sins and griefs to bear. Oh, yes. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God. In prayer, Glory to God now. can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share? Yes, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. We should never be discouraged. No, no, no. I'd like to say that part again. We should never be discouraged. No, 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 no. Just take everything to God in prayer. Everybody sing what with me? What? Yeah. 
What a privilege. Everything, everything to God in prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise His name. Amen. Everybody should be on your feet right now. Everybody stand up, put your hands together. Let's give them some praise. You are my joy. Say it again. You are my joy. I will always love you. Come on, everybody. I will always worship you for you. if I got a witness in the house did he turn anybody's morning into dancing did he make your heart glad when you should have been down on your face 
Did he pick you up and just turn your life around? Can I get somebody to shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Look at that neighbor and say he turned my morning into dancing. And he does it over and over and over and over and over again. Can somebody just turn around like this and say over again? Oh yes he does. Everybody say. Turn my morning. Let me hear you say it. Into dancing. Say it loud. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I hear the praise team, but I don't hear nobody out there. Just follow some simple instructions this morning. If he's ever turned your morning into dancing, just turn around one time and say, he did it. He did it. Yes, he did. He did it. He turned my morning into dancing. And the reason I turn around is because he does it over and over and over and over. Look at somebody and say he does it over and over and over and over again. That's why I sing. That's why I shout because he... Uh, Before you seat, before you take your seat, before you take your seat, I want to ask you to join us in a word of prayer. And if the Berger family is here this morning, I want you to all come. come. Berger family, please come on up. Thank you. It's good. I see the Watkins family. They've come in. Come on up. Join us in prayer, Watkins family. Bless you on this morning. Burger family, the Watkins family, praying for our own mother, Kathy Francis, praying for Tanya Warner, my darling sister, Philadelphia, praying for Pastor Isidore Grant. Y'all can say it softly. Praying for Michelle Coleman. Watkins family, Burger family. This is a prayer for what he's already done. Just, just to say thank you because he's been so gracious, so kind, and he's been so good. And we would be remiss if we did not give him honor and glory and praise for all of his bountiful blessings. So those that are standing, this is a prayer of thank you. For those that are in the pews, we're asking the Lord to allow his spirit to walk down these aisles and squeeze down every pew. And no matter what you have difficulty with, no matter what challenge is going on in your life right now, just for these next few minutes, I want you to believe that our God is able. That our God can do anything but fail. And if you have the nerve to ask him to do it, he'll turn it around right now. He'll touch your heart today. He'll move the mountain. He'll bring down the high place. He'll exalt your valley. Our God is able. That's why we magnify him. God, God is able. That's why we praise him. And I thank God we know his name, Emmanuel. God is with us. Every head is bowed. Lift your hearts. In your own way, begin to converse with him. Talk with him like he's standing right by your side. Speak to him. And let him hear the echoes of your heart. 
Let his spirit move into the recesses of your mind. And know that our God hears your every prayer. He has an answer for every situation. Nothing's too hard. Nothing's impossible. We serve a God that's able. And for those that you've asked him for healing, he's a healer. He's a deliverer. And he is a keeper. And so we're asking for his healing virtue on this morning to visit with us, to touch us, to allow us to know that his grace is sufficient. Nothing impossible. Nothing is too hard. Emmanuel, our God, he's with us. Bringing down your high place right now. Opening doors right now. Touching you in a special way right now. Thank you, Jesus. We just want to thank you for what you've already done. Thank you for sending healing and help, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your mercies and your grace, Lord Jesus, Heavenly Father. Breaking every yoke, Lord Jesus. We declare victory, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We know that you're able, Lord. And right now, Lord Jesus, we ask you to touch my sister in a very special way, Lord Jesus. Send healing, Lord Jesus, my Savior. Let your great name be magnified. Let it be exalted, Lord Jesus. You know what the need is, Lord Jesus Christ. You know what we ask for, Lord. So right now, Lord Jesus, allow your spirit, Lord Jesus, to touch our hearts, Lord Jesus. Allow your spirit to let us know we have victory, Lord Jesus. Allow your spirit to speak to us, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Allow your spirit to break the yoke, Lord Jesus. Bring down the high place, Lord Jesus. Let your blood prevail. Hallelujah. Let your blood prevail, Lord Jesus. Let your blood prevail, Lord Jesus. Send healing. Nothing too hard, hallelujah, nothing impossible, Lord Jesus. You're the God of our salvation, Lord Jesus. You and only you are able, Lord Jesus. So we praise you, Lord Jesus, and we thank you, Lord Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus, and we exalt you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. In your wonderful, wonderful name. Everybody lift holy hands and shout hallelujah. Now turn to somebody to your right or your left and say, I got the victory. I don't know about you, but I got the victory. I don't know about you, but I got my healing. I don't know about you, I got my deliverance. I don't know about you, but God's made a way. He opened the door, I feel the door opening right now. Closing doors that nobody can shut. Hallelujah. I dare you one more time, lift those hands and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Hallelujah. Emmanuel. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. Oh, come let us adore him. Kneel down before him. Worship and adore him. His name is Emmanuel. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's all right. You can praise him. Hallelujah. Say, I don't know what you come to do. Hallelujah. But I came to give him a praise this morning. Because he's been good. I give him a praise. I come to praise him. I come to magnify him. Hallelujah. You don't know like I know. Amen. And he just keeps on doing great things over and over and over. Look at somebody and say, Lord, do it one more time. Yes. Just one more time. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's heal Emmanuel.
something on the inside. Emmanuel. I gotta praise, I gotta get it out. Emmanuel. Bless his holy name. We worship you. We worship you. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. Take it all the way down, take it all the way down. Now y'all sitting there like you don't know. Look at somebody and say, don't act like you don't know. Who Emmanuel is. 
his name is a name above every name he's king of kings and lord of lords alpha and omega the lion of judah fought my battle brought down my high place I don't know about you but I owe him a praise and I don't know about you but I love that name Emmanuel God with us so I want you to join me this morning and one more time I want to lift that holy and that righteous name I want the angels to hear us declare that that name is above every name I want the angels to hear us declare that his name is Emmanuel and I want every demon to flee. I want every devil to know that I've got the Lord on my side. And I'm not ashamed to call him by his name. Emmanuel. Come on, say it, say it, say it. Emmanuel. Can everybody say it? Say it, say it loud. Emmanuel. I don't hear y'all over here say it. Emmanuel. Y'all playing with it. Say it over here. Emmanuel. Y'all say it, say it. Emmanuel. They don't want to say it. Emmanuel. I'll say it all by myself. Emmanuel. Say it, brothers. Emmanuel. The brothers say it. Emmanuel. One more time. Let's hear.
Thank you, praise team. On this morning, to ask you to look at the first chapter of the Gospel of Luke. somebody and say it's all right to praise him. <laughs> Gospel of Luke. Gospel of Luke, first chapter, verse number 37. I want to thank you all for being with us on this morning. And certainly we want to ask you to join us after our morning worship for a very, very special Christmas meal and celebration. And that's just in gratitude for the Lord allowing us to enter into another season, a holiday, providing for us, keeping us as only he's able to do. Luke, first chapter, verse number 37, and it reads as follows, for nothing is impossible with God. Can you say that with me? For nothing is impossible with God. Now turn to that person on your right or on your left and repeat these words. Won't he do it? The Gospel of Luke is written to convince every believer that what God promises, he will bring to pass. In other words, whatever God declares, he is able to do. Luke uses eyewitnesses, their accounts, and servants of the word to verify his gospel. There are four things that we should understand about the gospel according to Luke. Number one, that he has thoroughly investigated the stories he tells. Luke is a physician, and as a doctor, he knows how to give thorough investigation. Luke knows how to give a thorough examination. Number two, he goes back to the beginning to tell his story, and his gospel begins with the birth of John the Baptist, who is a contemporary of Jesus Christ. Number three, Luke is meticulous in his commentary. He gives a detailed account of the life of Jesus. And number four, Luke gives an orderly, practical account of the summary of the life of Jesus. To give an orderly account of events does not mean that he tells the story in chronological order, but what Luke does is give a narrative that is well arranged in its sequence of events. His logical sequence of events helps persuade the believer that the information that he presents is true. Luke tells nothing but the truth and the only truth. Luke is writing to Theophilus, a new convert, who is a Gentile and not familiar with the law and traditions of the Jews. Luke is a two-part commentary it's connected with the book of Acts. It is the only gospel written which is tied directly to the history of the church found in the book of Acts. The gospel of Luke answers three important questions. Number one, who Jesus is, why did Jesus come, and what did Jesus do? Who is Jesus? 
He's not only the Messiah, the redeemer of the nation of Israel, but he is the savior of the entire race. Why did Jesus come? He came to die for our sins and trespasses and form a new body or community of believers who are filled with his spirit and serve him in true holiness. And number three, what did Jesus do? Jesus points us to the way, the truth, and the light. He shows us that the only way to God is to repent for our sins and ask for forgiveness. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus overcame the boundaries and limitations of nature. He had a supernatural birth. He healed the sick and he raised the dead. He proved he could overcome any and every obstacle that blocks his promise. Jesus is the centerpiece of God's plan for salvation. He is the one who calls us to his grace. He is the one who gives forgiveness for sins. And he is the one who sends the anointing of his spirit. He is the one who protects, guides, and leads us on this journey called eternal and everlasting life. And if you believe that, why don't you give him a praise? The Gospel of Luke identifies Mary as a virgin who was engaged to Joseph. The marriage was to take place in the coming year. A Jewish engagement was called a Bartholo, which consisted of two parts. The first part of the engagement was their agreement where a contract to marry was signed by both parties. The groom paid the bride's family, usually the father, a monetary gift for permission to marry his daughter. The second part of the wedding ceremony could take place as long as a year in planning and preparation. A Jewish wedding was a dream for a wedding planner. Jewish weddings were large and very expensive. The engagement could only be broken by a formal divorce with consent of either party. This was a standing Old Testament tradition in Jewish culture. In the Gospel of Matthew, Joseph contemplates a bill of divorcement when he learns that Mary is with child. A betrothal is, was a more binding agreement than an engagement. When you were betrothed, it can only be broken by an act of divorce. And if you were a betrothed woman and you became pregnant before you married, you were regarded as an adulteress. And so a betrothal was more than an engagement. It was an agreement binding by a signed contract that these two parties were going to marry. And divorce was the only way their agreement or engagement to be married could be rescinded or broken. Mary had no sexual relationships before the birth of Jesus. She is a virgin chosen by God to give birth to God's only begotten son. The angel Gabriel announces, Mary, the Lord is with you. So Mary is highly favored, which means that she is a recipient of God's grace. Favor means that she is selected by God as a chosen vessel. She will carry the baby Jesus in her womb for nine months. Then she will give birth to the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Emmanuel, will be born in a manger, and he will be wrapped in swaddling clothes. Highly favored is to be endued with grace. To be highly favored is a gift 
which nobody deserves. Grace is the favor of God. It is a gift which is divinely appointed. Favor is the sovereign decision by God to bless a person beyond ordinary circumstances. It is the prerogative of God to choose who he desires to do his will. The choice is never determined because of a person's intellect, their talent, their gifting, or their skills. No one counsels. No one advises God. He's Alpha, Omega, the beginning, the end. He's omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. He is sovereign in all of his ways. In Romans, the ninth chapter, the scripture reminds us that Rebekah's children had the same father, Isaac. Yet before the twins were born or had done anything good or bad for his own purpose, not by works, God chose the younger brother to serve the older brother. Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. God hated Esau, but he loved Jacob. Neither had done good or bad. Favor is always the sovereign decision of God. And he chooses whom he will, when he will, to do his purpose and to give glory to his name. Mary is highly favored. She's honored by God, not because of her own merit, or because she has done anything good or bad, but simply because she is a woman who was a vessel for the demonstration of God's grace. Mary is a virgin with no sexual experience. The Holy Spirit will overtake her and supernaturally produce a holy child. She is asked to bear a child without being married. Mary asked the question, how can these things be? Look at somebody and ask that question. How can these things be? And the angel Gabriel replies, nothing is impossible with God. Once again, the angel speaks to Mary and says these words, nothing is impossible with God. Once again, I want to declare to somebody this morning, I hear the angel saying, nothing is impossible with God. God works in mysterious ways. We expect prepackaged blessings. We think that one size fits all. But God is sovereign, and he works according to his own will and purpose. He chooses the most unlikely people to do his will. Where you going, Pastor? Well, in case you don't get the picture, that's why God chose you. Your education did not qualify you. Your work experience did not qualify you. Your resume will always be inadequate. You lack the necessary experience to do the job. But in spite of all of your perfect imperfections, God in his sovereign wisdom and knowledge chose you. He takes you through a process in which you had no previous training or preparation. In spite of all your shortcomings, failures, and faults, he will give you the victory. You did not choose me, I called and chose you. And for that, you owe him a praise. God can and will use anyone who makes themselves available to him. It's important for us to recognize that spiritual greatness is not a matter of social class. It's not a matter of how much money you have in your pocket. It's not a matter of what degree or background you have. 
Spiritual greatness comes because you become available to you, to him. And spiritual greatness is a function of the heart. Always remember this. When somebody says you can't do it, when somebody says God won't use you, when somebody says you're not qualified to do what God has called you to do, always remember this. Men look on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And so if we look and study the scriptures closely, you'll understand that's why he chose David, a shepherd boy who was working in the field. He became a giant slayer and Israel's greatest king. Jesse came down to the house. Uh, Samuel came down to the house of Jesse and he, he looked at all of uh, uh, David's brothers. Uh, some were warriors. Some were great men of statue. Uh, some had more uh, ability and, 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 and more uh, uh, qualifications than David. But Jesse said, none of these. Uh, David came in strumming his guitar, singing praises to God. Uh, he had just come from the field with no experience in how to serve and do God's will. But Jesse said, this is the one. And I come to tell somebody on this morning, you are the one. Uh, you didn't have the qualifications. Uh, you, you don't have the knowledge. You don't have the training. Uh, but I stopped by to tell you on this morning that you are the one. Uh, you're the one he wants to use for his glory. Uh, you're the one he wants to use uh, to lift up his name. Uh, you're the one he's called to magnify and glorify him. Uh, put your hand on yourself uh, and say, I am the one. Uh, I'm available to you, Lord. Uh, and I want you to use me any way you want to use me, Lord. Uh, I want you to bless me any way you want to bless me. Uh, and anytime somebody tells me I can, uh, I'm going to remember what you said in your word. Uh, I can do all things through Christ. Uh, he's the strength of my life. Uh, he'll bring down high places. Uh, he'll open in every door. Uh, he'll put sweating in my feet uh, and clapping in my hands. Uh, he'll put a praise in my heart because he wants to use you for his glory and for his honor. And so here it is. Just four lessons that we can learn from Mary's reply to the angel. And her reply to Gabriel was, let it be to me as you have said. First, we must make ourselves available to be used by God. Amen. Tell the Lord every day, I'm available to you. Use me for your glory. You are the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me to do thy will. Number two, if you don't hear anything else I've said this morning, Leave those doors understanding this, that God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Mary is honored she is not worshipped as some believed. He used Noah to build the ark and no one worshipped Noah. He used Moses to deliver the children of Israel, but no one worships Moses. He used David to defeat Goliath but no one worshiped David. Mary is highly favored and honored. She's respected, she's adored, she's magnified, but only Jesus is the one who deserves worship and praise. And so if you're looking, if you're looking for somebody to praise, if that gene in you wants to lift somebody up, if that DNA in you wants to glorify and magnify somebody up, uh, remember it's not your car, it's not your house, uh, it's not your 401k or your bank account, uh, it's not your children or their children. Uh, if you want to glorify and praise somebody up, uh, if you want to magnify somebody up, uh, his name is Emmanuel, uh, God with us. Uh, the only one that deserves praise is Jesus. Uh, the only one that deserves our exaltation is Jesus. Uh, the only one that deserves my worship is Jesus. Why? Because he bought me from a mighty long way. Uh, why? Because he was a help uh, in the time of trouble. Why? Because he was a bridge uh, across troubled water. Why? Because if it had not been 
for the Lord on my side, I would not have clapping in my hands. I would not have dancing in my feet. I would not have a praise in my heart. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul magnifies him. My soul glorifies him. Something inside wants to give him the praise. Thank you, Lord. You brought me from a body long way. Thank you, Lord. You brought down every high place. Thank you, Lord. You fought every battle. Thank you, Lord. You helped me when I couldn't help myself. I need somebody to stand on their feet and give God 60 seconds of your best praise. Number three, God has a sovereign call on your life. He has no respect of persons. He will use you to bring him glory. And he will deliver you from every situation and every circumstance that hinders you from bringing honor and glory to his great name. He'll fight every battle, rebuke every demon in hell, cancel every assignment that the devil has against your life because he wants to use you for his glory. Dead men can't speak. Uh, don't tell me you're going to praise him uh, after you go to the grave, uh, but God wants you to praise him right now. Uh, he wants you to give him the sacrifice of praise. Uh, uh, he wants to hear how much you love him. Uh, how much you adore him, how much you magnify him. He wants you to be thankful because he's great and he's greatly to be praised. And so what God is asking for you and I, he's asking that we answer the sovereign call that he has on your life. When he knocks on the door, say yes. When he knocks on the door, say hear my Lord. When he knocks on the door, Open your heart up and say, use me, Lord, for your glory. I know I'm not worthy. I know I'm not qualified. I was born on the wrong side of the tracks. But if you put something in me, Lord, if you let me have your spirit, if you let me have your anointing, Lord, I'll go where you want me to go. Say what you want me to say. Do what you want me to do. But anoint me, Lord, and use me for your glory. And so here it is, the last thing. Not only does God have a sovereign call on your life, not only does God use ordinary people to do extraordinary things, but remember this, with God, all things are possible. Amen. He's a heavy lead bearer. He's Emmanuel, God with us. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Yes. We should never allow intimidation or an inferiority complex to defeat the purpose of God in our life. We are called to minister and serve the body of Christ. We are called to be witnesses of his grace and of his mercies. And God will help you overcome any limitations you may have. Let him fight the battle. Let him bring down your high place. Let him lift you from your valley. Let him be the bridge across troubled water. Let him take you where he wants you to go up. Stop being intimidated. Up. Stop working around with your epitaph in your pocket. Up. Acting like you're about to die. Up. Tell every demon in hell, I'm going to live up, because God is my help. Up. I'm going to live because God is my strength. Up. I'm going to live to give God glory. I'm, I'm going to see another day of 
victory. I'm, I'm going to see another day of praise. I'm, I'm going to live another day just to magnify his name. I, and if you don't like it, I, you better get out of my way. Because my mind's made up. I, my heart is fixed. I, I'm going with Jesus. I, 99 and a half won't do. I, I'm running for my life. I, and I've got to make a hundred. I, anybody running? I, lift your hand up and say 99 and a half won't do. I'm ready for my life. I've got to make a hundred. God will take your inferiority complex and he'll make something great out of your life. God will do the unimaginable because you have the grace and the favor that God gives to those that he chose, chooses and brings into this great salvation. If God didn't want to use you, he would have never called you. If God didn't want to use you, he would have never anointed you with the power of his spirit. If God didn't want to use you, he would not allow you to live another day. But because God wants to use you for his glory, because God wants to choose you, uh, because he wants to endue you with grace. Uh, you've got to make up your mind. Uh, you've got to say, my heart is fixed. Uh, you've got to say, I'm not going to give up. Um, I'm not going to throw in the towel. Uh, yes, there will be days uh, um, when there will be trouble in your way. Uh, yes, there will be storms on the horizon. Uh, yes, every day won't be Sunday. Uh, but let the devil and every demon in hell know, uh, as long as I've got King Jesus, uh, everything is going to be all right. Uh, as a matter of fact, I don't know about you, uh, but I got a feeling uh, everything is going to be all right. Uh, I got a feeling uh, he's going to heal my body. Uh, I got a feeling uh, he's going to keep my mind. Uh, I got a feeling he's going to make a way out of no way. Uh, that's why I've got running in my feet. Uh, I've got clapping in my hands. Uh, I'm like a well of water on the inside uh, and it's bubbling up, uh, bubbling Bubbling, bubbling over. Um, I can't keep it to myself. Um, I've got to lift my hands. Um, I've got to lift my voice. Um, I've got to give him the praise. Um, I've got to give him the glory. Um, I've got to say thank you. You've been good. Um, I've got to say thank you. You made a way. Um, I've got to say thank you. You healed my body. I've got to say thank you. You kept my mind. I've got to say thank you. You're the God of my salvation. Every, every now and then, you just ought to have a, a praise in your soul. You ain't got to be like everybody else. You ain't got to be the deepest thing and the most saved thing in Columbus, Ohio. But every now and then, every, every so often, uh, some other bubble up. Uh, you ought to think of the goodness of Jesus. Uh, you ought to think of how good he's been to you. Uh, you could have been cut off. Uh, you could have been lost. Uh, it could have been you out there. Uh, and no shoes, no clothes. Uh, it could have been you out there uh, 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 looking for a, a, a house, a home, uh, a place to lay your head up. Uh, my Lord, the God I serve, uh, he be good to me. Uh, the God I serve, uh, he be good to you. Uh, and if you don't want to praise him, uh, come on up here, praise him. Uh, if they don't want to praise him, uh, I'll praise him all by myself. Uh, if they don't want to praise him, uh, I'll lift my hands. Uh, if they don't want to praise him, I'll bow down uh, and I'll worship him. Uh, he's the God of my salvation. Uh, he's the God of glory. Uh, he's the God of peace. Uh, and I'll bow down uh, and I'll worship you uh, because you're the God of God, the King of kings, uh, and the Lord of lords. Uh, Before I take my seat, your faith will give you the strength to perform the task 
that God has assigned in your life. Yes. Just remember, he can, he will. Yes. Look toward heaven and shout these words. Won't he do it? Every time. If you believe he'll do it, stand to your feet. One song says this. How great is our God. So great, so awesome. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Yes, yes. So all can see. Yes. They're the words, I see them. Everybody say it, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And I will sing. How great. How great. How great. Everybody, everybody, one big choir. How great. How great is our God. Sing with me. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Say that verse again. How great is our God. Somebody's eyes prayer, won't you come? Somebody not baptized in the wonderful, precious name of Jesus Christ. Somebody not filled with the Holy Ghost. Time for you to come. Give your life to him. Make yourself available to him. Everybody say it. How great is our God? Somebody else wants to come. It's for you. For you and your children. It's great, great, great salvation. He's king of...
Lord will see how great, how great. Everybody standing. Our God. Everybody join me in the chorus. Everybody say it. How great is our God? How great. Let me hear you say it. Is our God. Sing with me. Sing with me. How great. And all is will our see. God. And all will see how great. How great. I'm going to take my seat, but it sounds good to me. Say it one more time. How great is our God. Sing it. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. For me, for me. Worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. Name above all names. Above every name. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. Name above all the Lord. How great is our God? Think about that. How great is he in your life? He's been great in mine. We bless the Lord today. How great, how great, how great, how great is our God? Amen. Amen. He's a mighty good God. Amen. Amen. Well, our announcements today are brief, and they are as follows. On Sunday, December the 24th, that's Christmas Eve, there will be no Sunday school, but our worship service begins at 10 a.m. On December the 31st, which is New Year's Eve, again, no Sunday school, and our worship service begins at 10 a.m. But for watch night service, we will begin at 8 o'clock, here at Rehoboth Temple Church, and we are worshiping the Lord with the home church, Little Rock, the Blessed Church, and Elysia. Also, on that evening, we ask that you bring out your families and friends and be blessed with us as we will have communion as we go into the new year. Amen? Amen. And the church office will be closed December the 25th, that's Christmas Day, through January the 2nd, that's Tuesday, okay? But as always, we do check our emails and our voicemails. So if you need anything immediately from the church, please leave a voicemail, amen. Well, it's offering time in the sanctuary. Get excited, get excited, amen. The Bible says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there might be meat in my house and see if I won't pour out a blessing 
that there might be room enough to receive. How many of you want God to pour it out? I want him to pour out some things in 2024.